Howdy folks, I'm the Tall Turtle, and welcome back to my Texture Pack updates. If you haven't seen the other Texture Pack update videos, please check in the description below for a link to the playlist for the previous update videos. And let's get started. All right, we have a tremendous amount of updates to do here, if I may say so myself. What had happened was I did a few updates, and then I was going to do a video, but I was having so much fun updating textures that I just updated like, ugh, like 30, <laughs> like at least two dozen textures. So we're going to burn through them super fast, keep the video short. I want to go backwards on my list. So the first thing I wanted to show you are my Elytra textures, which I wasn't sure I was going to do, but I ended up doing them anyway. So let's get a few of this going here because we're going to need them anyway for a whole bunch of other things, lots of items. So Elytra texture, simple enough and broken Elytra, which I don't know when you actually see that, see that in the game. I guess if you break your Elytra and you still wear it, you see it in your inventory maybe. Otherwise, you can't even get it from creative. I actually had to fly around with Elytra and survival and get it to break to get you that texture. So hopefully you enjoy it. So the Elytra, coming from the Phantom Membrane, and um, when you process the Phantom Membrane into fixing your Elytra, you get a fabric type thing. This almost looks too fabric-y, but if I change the scale of it, it looks like white. So that is the Elytra fabric. That's what the texture is going to be, which also means I'm wearing my Elytra in fabric form again i was gonna make the scale a little different but this would be big heavy tarp like like um not plastic tarp but fabric tarp type material if you think about it if you're gonna fly with it so i think that represents it pretty well and then once it's enchanted of course it gives it some color and some flavor and some movement so um the plane elytra is gonna look like that enchanted will We'll see that in my Survivor Craft videos, of course. But I wanted to then show you my firework textures, particles, which would be called Spark. But he can't do it in um, Creative, so he actually have to jump to Survival. So I can show you what happens when you fly, because I did do the textures myself for the particles when you fly. So let's get into Survival first, and then let's set up... Um, some rockets here so we can fly. So what we're looking for is the firework sparks. See those sparks in the middle, bottom, center of your screen when you fly? Those textures I did myself. So I kind of kept the default flavor again, like happened with other particles, but I just gave it a higher resolution and it looks a little more interesting and less cube-like. And are we gonna see them? I guess we're going too fast to see them. There we go. So you get the idea. I decided not to color them. We're gonna keep them like ashes. But again, high resolution. Ooh, I have a um, cicada in my basement. <laughs> That's what that noise was. So high resolution and softened up the edges a little bit. So I wanted to show you there. Let's go back into creative because I think there's modules running around from when I did a test and we'll continue. All right, let's ditch the rockets here because I don't need to look at them anymore. Let's just throw them. I guess we're gonna pick them up anyway. Again, the rocket texture's not mine. That comes from the red craft sitting under my texture pack, but the sparks are mine. So let's see, where were we? We did the fireworks sparks. That's a particle. We did elytra on my body. We did the broken elytra and the elytra in the item frame. Now let's look at the phantom membrane. So I, well, I had three different textures of this. So I'm gonna, if I still have my screenshot, there's a screenshot you're looking at now, my three different ideas. The one idea obviously is what the elytra became. This is the middle idea is my favorite and what I've chosen. Then the last idea is what might be more of a membrane looking. So anyway, I made this first and I loved it. It looks gross and it looks dead. And I realized it wasn't very membrane-like. So then I thought, you know what? Let's use that third texture. But then I'm like, that's too scaly, even if it is membrane-like. So then I decided at the last minute, oh, let's get rid of you. Hang on, let's get rid of you. There we go to use this texture anyway. And then you would just peel the membrane off the back, I guess, to make your elytra, if you want to have continuity there. So that's what my phantom membrane is gonna look like. It is nasty and awesome. I love it. And we're gonna see a lot of it too when we play the game. So moving along quickly, we are going to show you the chorus fruit and the popped chorus fruit. So I originally had a very fruity looking chorus fruit, but the chorus fruit or chorus plant comes from the end. 
And there's really only two colors in the end, yellow and purple. So I don't want to add any more colors to that theme. And I wanted to keep my coarse fruit to be similar to the coarse plant. Now I know a lot of fruit in real life looks nothing like the plant. Even pears, apples, berries does not look like the plant. But I decided since it's the end dimension and there's so few textures there, I wanted to keep the simplicity and minimalism. So I kept the coarse fruit looking like the coarse plant. So even though it might not look like much, a lot of thought went into that. So there's your coarse fruit. We're really only going to see it in chest anyway and when we pop a plant, right? But also makes it more interesting like the coarse fruit is hidden within the plant. It's kind of camouflaged because it looks like the plant. So that's why I came up with that. That took, that was a lot of layers there. Just don't, I did leave a little bit of stem where it connects. And then pop coarse fruit. You pop it, you cook it, you burn it. It looks like this, which um, looks fine in a chest. It looks kind of dark on the dark item frame. But that's what pop coarse fruit looks like now. That's what it's going to look like in my texture pack. I'm happy with it. I'm done with it. And I've moved along. So next is the wither rose, which doesn't look like a rose, I know. But it definitely looks withered. It almost looks like the rose started to bloom up here, but it died and then this all withered. So that is what my wither rose texture looks like. And again, those black smoke particles are mine as well. So there you go. I'm very happy with that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get the next set of textures set up and I'll do a cut and I'll be right back with more. All right, so here we are. A bunch more. Is that a creeper up there? No, <laughs> a bunch more textures to show you. So the armor stand. I finally did the armor stand, and while it looks plain and simple here, once there is a character on it, like we do in Survivor Craft, the arms and everything are textured as well. So there you go, armor stand. Pause if you want to look at that in more detail, but we're going to move right along. Potions and bottles. So I did the remaining potion types myself, but then it didn't match because Redcraft had done their own. So what I did is I did all my own glass bottles, water bottles, everything all the bottles now in my texture pack are all mine um so even though the red craft sits under this again if i said the previous video is completely separate and unrelated it's just i use red craft under mine separately i have gone back and done or i've gone ahead and done all the glass bottles myself for continuity so there is a plain glass bottle for you and then you can run over here and fill it up and you can get then a water bottle with it you know sitting in there the water full and then regular potions look like that splash potions we now have splash potion textures with a rounded bottle and a reinforced top see how's reinforced up here with the cork again lots of details went into this bottle making um even though they're pretty simple a lot of details went into it so reinforced top there because that's where your splash sprayer would be Lingering, it's open, so it kind of lingers in the air, right? So it's full and it's lingering and it's open. Enchanting bottle had its own completely different texture, but for continuity, I kept the bottle the same. Dragon's Breath, again, has its own texture. So there we go. And then next I need to show you what comes with potions is the brewing stand. I finally did a brewing stand, but I just wanted to show you the continuity here. Everything from the glass bottle to water bottle to all the different potions they're all matching now i'm so excited that actually was way more enjoyable to do than i thought um i'm actually very pleased with how those turned out so there is the, are the potion types because again this is one that's one texture this is another texture that's another texture that's another texture each one of these are completely separate textures they're not one texture that borrows these are all completely separate textures, including the overlays. I had to redo the potion overlay myself and the water overlay. I had to do that myself. So let me get the brain stand material set up, and we will continue with more. All right, so here we go. I have a brewing stand in my hand. And I must say, this brewing stand was the most challenging texture I have done since I started this project. Um, I spent four days doing and redoing this brewing stand to be something that I liked. Um, it's changed so many times. For example, the bottom where the bottles go, I actually had like cups on there, little things to set the bottles in, but they didn't line up with the textures of Minecraft. Even though I moved them over, it was terrible. So I'm super proud of this thing because it took forever, four days off and on to do that. So now let's see what happens when you actually put something in there. So I got some nether wart and some blaze powder. 
And some water bottles. Let's do it like this. Like, whoops. Like that. And there you go. I change it to bright neon green because it's like a science experiment. And then the texture changes. See, when you swing the pipe over to put it in the bottle. Which the Minecraft one actually didn't do. The default doesn't actually go in the bottle if you look carefully. It kind of misses it. But anyway, so there it is. So you can see how the bottles don't exactly line up with the things underneath. And I have no control over that. So that's why I removed the little cups. But the black is slightly different color, right? There's a little bit of reflection in there. Um, and I'm just really thrilled with how that turned out. And there's a bottom too, if you really want to see what the bottom looks like. Um, oh dear. Place, there we go. There is a bottom texture, it's just like that. But it counts, it matters. Let's get out of the sky before I forget. But anyway, there it is. There is the brewing stand. I'm so excited because I thought it was going to be kind of easy and then end up being the most challenging texture since they started back in 113. Just crazy. But anyway, moving on, what is next on my list? Looks like the bell is next. And the bell is really difficult too because you have several different configurations of the bell that you can have depending how you place it. So I had to make, whoops, that's not a bell. So I had to make sure they were all covered. So the bell, I had to rewrite the JSON too because it borrowed the wood and the cement posts from other textures that currently sit in the underlying breadcraft. And I have to make sure separate, I can't borrow textures. So any textures like this, where it comes from multiple different sources, I had to make sure all the sources, all the parts were mine. So I rewrote the JSON, created some brand new textures, so that I could keep it separate. But we have a cement for stability with the wood that's cracking because of the weight. Then we have a bell, which I notice makes different sounds as you click it. But there you go, the bell. I was going to put like bind, binding and strapping on it, but that's just too much of a good thing. So there's the bell and there's an underside to it as well. Then it hangs differently. I made sure that the bell itself was more brass looking than um, the outside which is like a coppery brass, and then a little bit of depth to the darkness. So there's the bell, super happy with that one. And then the lantern was another one I was worried about because I wanted it to be see-through with a moving flame, because if you look, it moves, right? See how it moves? It moves there. Then there's the hook. I even made a curved hook. I made a curve in Minecraft, but I couldn't have a see-through because then it was literally see-through and it would lose one of the dimensions when you moved around. So it had to be solid, no way around it. But I gave it a way to look nice when it hangs. Let's go actually one higher on this. So let's go up here. And sorry about my space for being loud. I have a large number lit up keyboard so I can be completely in the dark, but it's loud. So there it is on the ground with the little hook, right? And here it is hanging. Again, I gave it chains. I mean, the chains are part of it, but I made them round and linked, see? And shiny because they kept breaking, so they got a new chain. But there you go, and there's a bottom as well. Kind of like a old stainless steel tray or something. But there's a lantern and it moves. I'm really excited about that one because I didn't know how I was going to do it and I was worried about it. And it worked out. The bell I was worried about, that worked out. The brewing stand I wasn't worried about and ended up being the most challenging thing ever. <laughs> but anyway, I got that done. And last for today is scaffolding the item in my hand. Oh yeah, notice the items too down below. These are often separate textures that I have to do separately. Not always, but sometimes. Um, actually, that one I didn't, but this had I had to do. Yes, I did. I do that one, that one. I had to do this one, this one, this one all separately. I don't think I do this one separately. But anyway, scaffolding was an interesting texture to make because it actually doesn't use all the parts. So some of these textures, like the bell, there's like six bell files, not JSON, but PNG files. This one being the body file, and then all the separate files. It doesn't use the separate files. So I don't know if it's bloat that they changed the way they were going to do to Minecraft and forgot to get rid of the bloat, um, or they're going to use it in the future. But a lot of these textures are like that, where you don't even have to do all the parts. But I do anyway, just in case. This was another example. But I'm really excited how this turned out. Now, I want to talk about scaffolding quickly. I did mention this in my last Survivorcraft episode and how this works. So even the pros miss some of the aspects. But if you click on it, you know, it'll make it higher, right? 
and then we just hit spacebar to go up it'll sit there shift to go down everybody knows how that works that's not a big deal um, you can build out you don't have to be whoops you don't have to be at the top to build out so you can still build up oh, that one underneath you gotta be kind of yeah it's tricky but it can be done see I built out if you look here I built out halfway through so you can layer your scaffolding it doesn't have to be all the way to the top um, finding that click spot though obviously is challenging but once you do it it's there see and then you can just build out and or you can go up higher and build out here see how that works now here's the thing people don't talk about first of all we all know at the end it's going to start dropping right but even if it drops you don't have to go down and start over you can just keep clicking it'll keep dropping but once it catches up it'll level off and build out again see so now it's building out the next layer and then it'll drop but then it'll build up again and then you can keep going once it catches up see is that awesome and you can keep going and going and going if you go in the right spot you can shift and um, creep along just like you can with a normal block where is our way down and then you can come down here and then just come down if you find the right spot it is so hard to find the right spot how do I go down it's this block here I want to make sure I'm on the top see now I'm on the top all halfway between blocks oh let me down anyway that's very strange <laughs> let's go over here can I go down on my original one there we go now I can go down then I should be able to then come up this one I would think yep but can I come down this one it's very tricky um, see I can go down just fine you just have to be in the exact right spot so can I go down the last one I made where are you where is it there it is I missed it all right here we go let's make sure we're on the top and there now I can go down see I just have to be in the right spot and then if you want to click you can oh my gosh I went through it again that's the hard thing to practice if you want to add you gotta make sure you're above it and then go through but then we can just you know connect to this one and then we can go up a little bit and it won't let me where let me go through it's not let me go that way for some reason oh yeah it did there we go again you just get click the right spot and now we're right below that one there we go see we connected one here and then if we wanted to oh, i guess we went up there <laughs> It's all about the click spots. Click. Where are we going? We're going up to the top. I want to go out again. There we go. Then we come up. Let's back up a little bit. And then let's come out this one. Then we can build this one out. Then we can go that direction and so on and so on, right? So there you go. There's scaffolding. Not the smoothest presentation, but those are all the aspects of it. Um, can't wait to use Survivor Craft when I build. I can't wait to have like a structure with scaffolding around it as my build. That's going to be fun too. Hey, Piggy. But otherwise, that is it. Those are all the updates I wanted to show you. It took a little bit longer than I thought, but that's okay. I just want to keep these videos short. I have a bunch more to do. I have not started the cartography table, Loomer Lectern yet. I need to get on that because those are the new 114 blocks as well. Um, most of this update was just kind of not going backwards, but just doing some tech that I've been wanting to do that's been around forever. But now you really got to get back on those 114 textures like the cartography to go Luma Lecture. And then I have a few other, let's see, I'm looking at my list. I really want to try kelp in the sea, but if I change that to eight times the resolution, all that kelp and movement, it could really bring a computer to a crawl unless it's a supercomputer. And I kind of do have a supercomputer, so I don't want to do something that works great for me, but it won't work great for most people. Just having 128 textures is pushing it for a lot of people. But I might try it. I might do a frame rate test with default kelp in the ocean and then do super high resolution kelp and do a frame rate test. And if it drops too much for me, it's not going to be feasible. If it barely drops for me, I might give it a shot. Don't know, but those are my plans. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Check back for more Survivor Craft and uh, texture pack updates and other videos. I'll catch you next time.